Thank you. Um, would you like to read paragraph two or shall I? Uh, you can read it if you want, yeah. Yeah, well. okay, okay. Uh, 13, paragraph two, here we are. Um, how does false religion misrepresent God by its actions? And it says false religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religion sins of mass clear together up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the death of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove they do not even know God, yet alone have the right to represent him. Um, it does seem fairly emphatic. It is the book saying that you can have no involvement at all in any way in politics or warfare if you are a servant of Jehovah and you follow Jehovah God and you represent Jehovah? Yeah, that's what it's saying. Because what, what puzzles me is that the Jehovah's Witnesses, Judge Rutherford, was involved in the First World War, supporting yeah. the American military in the pages of the Watchtower. And let me see. Oh, yes, I've got the reference here. I've written it down. The 18th of May, 1918, copy of Zion's Watchtower, page 6,257. He promotes the purchase of the Liberty Bond or the Liberty Loan to his American readers to support the American war effort. I mean, isn't that, you know, isn't that, well, he, he's hardly neutral, is he? If the Watchtower no, magazine a, itself is supporting the American war effort. It wasn't at that time, but then we were celebrating birthdays at that time, and our understanding of the Bible has become more mature since then, and we, we've come to this conclusion, this is what the Bible's teachings now is, we shouldn't be involved in warfare or politics. Sorry, I, I, I don't understand you, um, Bill. Uh, I'm sorry, I, you've totally lost me. You said he wasn't doing... It at that time, what do you mean? At that time. Was he, he doing what? Following, he was, he was, his understanding of the Bible wasn't as clear at that point in time, a hundred years ago, you know, as, it, as we have an understanding of the Bible now. No. So why do I need to listen to this guy or have anything to do with the Watchtower organisation then if they don't, if they don't obey because, Jehovah God? Well, we do obey Jehovah God, but we, didn't, we haven't done in the past. So you admit that you haven't past. obeyed Jehovah God in the past? Oh, the, yeah. If, well, if you were supporting... If that comment, I've not read that comment, but if that comment is correct, we obviously weren't doing what we're saying we should be done. Well, then, so we weren't doing what Jehovah asked then. Right. Then, then Jehovah never chose the Watchtower Society in 1919 and appointed a faithful slave, a faithful and discreet well, slave in 1919, did he? Because you've just said they, that they weren't faithful to Jehovah God. I, well, were the apostles completely faithful to Jehovah God? Was King David completely faithful to Jehovah God? Was Solomon completely faithful to Jehovah God? He, he, he said that some, uh, David was his friend, Abraham was his friend, Solomon was, he gave Solomon quite a lot of blessings, didn't he? Wealth and, and knowledge. But they weren't being completely obedient to God. So we say he rejects everybody just because they're not being completely obedient to the train the best. But the Watchtower it's wasn't that. at all obedient to God. In nineteen in nineteen nineteen they were supporting they had just in the previous year supported the American military in the First World War, yeah? Yeah. They also um taught that Jesus Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection. Now, you don't teach that now, but you, you did at that no. time. You taught that Jesus Christ was born a man. He was an angel. Then he, be, he be, was born and he became a man. But at his resurrection, Jesus Christ became Almighty God. That's in Berean Bible Teacher's Manual, page 454. I've got a copy of that, right. so it's not something dodgy yeah. off the internet. I've got a copy of that. Um, it's also taught in several copies of the Watchtower. I can't remember the references. And it's also taught in the Finnish Mystery. I've got a copy of that too. Mm. On page 15 and page 240 of my 1917 edition of the Finnish Mystery, it says just that, that Jesus Christ is Almighty God. Now, yeah. if that's not true because you don't teach that today, why on earth would Jesus choose the Watchtower Society in 1919? Well, why wouldn't he? If well, he was because they're not faithful. 
if it, if it was helping them to see clearer, which you've obviously done over the generations since then, the truths of the Bible have become clearer, and therefore we are now doing more of what Jehovah God wants. I'm not saying we're doing everything Jehovah God wants properly at this point in time, because I don't understand just what he wants myself. But I know that the message is getting clearer as we're getting further into these last days. Uh. In 1919, the Watchtower taught that the black race, the African race, was cursed. Um, Golden Age, 24th of July, 1929, page 702, um, says, question, is there anything in the Bible that reveals the origin of the Negro? Okay, meaning black African people. Answer, it is generally believed that the curse which Noah pronounced on Canaan was the origin of the black race. Certain... It was that when Noah said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren, he placed the future of the coloured race. They have been and are a race of servants. But now in the dawn of the 20th, 20th century, we are all coming to see this matter of service in its true light and to find that the only real joy in life is in serving others, not bossing them. There is no servant in the world as good as a good coloured servant. So it says that the Negro people are are cursed by God. Uh, that you know the black skin is a curse, and that they are a, a race of servants. I mean, if I was a black person and I, I'm not, why would I want anything to do with the Watchtower when they were teaching this as God's organizational truth, and that Jesus, this is the sort of stuff which Jesus approved of. Well, you know, although this again, war, although... all I can say is that the, the light has become brighter as time has passed by. Everybody has made mistakes in the past. You've got to think where the, those early Christians were coming from. They were coming from an era where all those things were felt to be true. They were trying to understand what the Bible taught from a position where the Bible had been misrepresented for hundreds of years. So they were bound to make mistakes at the beginning which we feel have been cleared up as time has gone by. So you keep quoting 1919 and 1917. Things have moved on since then. But 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 do you believe that Jehovah God chose the Watchtower Society in 1919? Yeah. Why would he? Why would Jesus select the Watchtower Society in 1919 when they taught? that black people are cursed, they're a race of servants, that Jesus Christ became the almighty God at his resurrection. They used the pyramid to make their Bible prophecies. They didn't do away with that until 1927. Uh -huh. So Russell, he went to Egypt, I think it was about 1910, sometime around then, give or take a year or two. And he measured the corridors inside the great pyramid of Egypt. And then based on the number of pyramid inches if you started somewhere in a sort of date in the old testament you come up with the date for armageddon to happen in 1914. Mm. got that wrong as well yeah i mean he mm. was he was into but pyramidology if you think about can i just say if you think about you were asked why did god choose the first and discreet slayer the people he did choose H hold on hold what? on what do you what do you mean what are you saying god chose a faithful and discreet slave are you he saying did. that god chose the watchtower society as his sole representative in 1919 yeah why would he do that when they were teaching so much blasphemy and error I, i'm trying to explain why he did it yeah right yeah who else was looking to learn what the bible really taught at that point in time well the jehovah's the bible students weren't they were no, they were who, following who, who russell else, and then rutherford Pardon? Who else was looking at that Christians, time to, Christians have been, to... Christians have been looking and faithfully, faithfully preaching the Bible for 2,000 years. I've got to object to that. Christians have not been faithfully following the Bible for 2,000 years. So you think the well, only... I thought the Bible foretells that would happen. You said earlier, light gets brighter and brighter. Now, where's mm. that in the Bible? Could you show me that verse in the Bible? Oh. The light gets brighter. It doesn't say that. Proverbs 4.18 talks about the path of the righteous. You're even just sort of 
paraphrasing the Bible and making stuff up as you go along. You're not, oh, you're not I'm being not accurate. I'm not talking anymore because all you're doing is you're going into the past, it's, you're accusing me of paraphrasing the Bible and misrepresenting it. And all I'm saying is that if you don't want to know what the Bible teaches, you mm. carry on along the way you want. Otherwise, if you do want to know, I'm happy to discuss it with you. Okay. About all right. It. But at this point in time, I feel that you're just being objectionable, trying to pick holes, and you're looking for reasons not to believe that Jehovah's Witnesses are part of the Jehovah's Organization. So if that is the case, then there's no point carrying on. All right. I'm happy to deal with things in the present rather than things in the past. But I would like to point out that Proverbs 4.18 says the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter until the perfect day. So it's the path of the just that is illuminated more as they walk in obedience to Jehovah God. That's in contrast to verse 19. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. So it, it's a contrast between faithful servants of Jehovah in verse 18 and unfaithful servants of Jehovah in verse 19. The path, yeah. meaning how they walk, how they live their life, um, gets ever brighter. It's just a figure uh -huh. of speech, it's not to be taken literally, as they are obedient to God in their life and they obey Jehovah, whereas the wicked stumble in darkness. They don't know what even makes them stumble. They just keep on stumbling. Um, today... The Watchtower Society, namely the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, today, in the year 2022, as it has since 1945, they receive share dividends from arms companies. <laughs> arms companies <laughs> such I've as... I've heard this reasoning before, and uh, I've, no evidence, I've no evidence of that, and I'm not willing to... Well, let me give evidence you the that. evidence, no, the Henrietta no, and no, Riley no, Trust. No, I prefer not to carry on with this discussion, because all you're trying to do is make my... Make my doubt about what the slander I believe. So, if, if you don't well, mind, I'll, I'll, I'll stop this conversation. What are you I afraid of? This, if I you're in the truth, this, you've no, got nothing to you, be. You if you're in the truth, you've got nothing to be afraid of. Oh, and he's hung up. If he's in the truth, he's got nothing to be afraid of, is he? And what cults do is they plus, they minus, they multiply, and they divide. Think of those four mathematical symbols. All cults, in some way, add to the Bible. So the Muslims add the Quran, um, the Mormons add the Book of Mormon, Jehovah's Witnesses add the Watchtower, Seventh-day Adventists add the works of Ellen G. White, um, some of the extreme Pentecostals, I'm not saying all of them, I, I used to be involved with the Pentecostal movement myself and I, I very definitely left it, but the extreme Pentecostals add the, the sort of ravings and the um, so-called prophetic words of people like Kenneth Copeland and Todd White. Um, that's the first sign of a cult. They add to the Bible. It's not sufficient. They don't believe in tota scriptura. They don't believe the Bible is the total word of God. It's only a partial revelation. There's more revelation today and they keep adding to the Bible. That's the first sign of a cult. The second is, think of the minus mathematical symbol. They take away from the person of Christ or the work of Christ. What Christ has done is not enough. Yeah, Think of do and done. Our salvation is based on what Christ has done. I don't need to do anything to add to my salvation because it's all been provided for me 100% by Jesus Christ. It's done, past tense. It's done by Christ. He secured my salvation when he died on the tree and rose again, the, the cross and rose again. But to the cults, well, Jesus really doesn't save you. He sort of starts the salvation process, but, but you've got to sort of add your own works to it. So it, it's not done. You're not focusing on what Christ has done. You're focusing on what, we, what you can do. Many cults take away from Christ because they don't believe that he's God. Um, I, I would say that the, the Mormons, for instance, teach that Jesus Christ is a man. He was born a man and he became a God. So he's not really God in the biblical sense as being, uh, being the eternal Yahweh God who's eternal, omnipotent, unchanging. Oh no, they believe in a created God. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses would say there's two gods. There's the almighty God 
and they would say that's the Father who they call Jehovah. And then they believe there's a secondary God, Jesus, who they would say is a lesser God, the mighty God. Uh, and he's created also. So can you see how they're taking away from Jesus? They either take away from the person of Jesus or from the work of Jesus. Perhaps the most subtle group of all is a group I was connected with for about nine or ten months. The oneness movement, Jesus only, the apostolic movement. It's a massive, massive movement within Pentecostalism. And in South America and Asia, it's, it's beginning to take over. There's probably uh, far more oneness Pentecostals in the world, far more than there are Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons and Seventh-day Adventists put together. And they take away from Jesus. They don't focus upon what Jesus did on the cross. They're not interested in that. They're not interested in what Jesus has done on the cross when he died and rose again. Their focus is upon what you can do. You've got to do your works. You've got to get baptized the right way. You've got to speak in tongues. You've got to pay that tithe so the pastor can have his new Mercedes. It's all about you and your works. Now, of course, after salvation, uh, I hope that there are works. But works, which we would refer to as sanctification, not justification. Works to say thank you for Jesus for, for saving me. Not works that we do in order to get saved. But in the oneness movement, when I was connected to them, you do works in, that, in order to be saved. Um, and in the oneness movement, although they will say Jesus is God, when you actually tie them down, you ask them to define who is the Son of God. Although they will say Jesus is God, actually in oneness theology, the Son is not God. He's actually a created being, just as in Mormonism and just as in the Jehovah's Witness faith. But it's far more subtle because oneness Pentecostals call, because they're modalists who believe Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son and Jesus is the Holy Spirit. They'll say, well, Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, and Jesus is the Holy Spirit. So you ask them, is Jesus God? And they say, yeah, Jesus is God. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is uncreated. Jesus has always existed. And you think, well, that's pretty good. That's biblical. But then you realize they're talking about Jesus the Father. The Son in oneness theology came into existence 2,000 years ago and is a created being, just as in Mormonism, just as in Jehovah's Witnesses. But they hide that from you. They hide that from you behind the lie, Jesus is God. Because when, you are, when they say Jesus is God, they mean the Father who they call Jesus is God. But they do not believe in the deity of the Son. So that's the plus sign, that's the minus sign. The multiplication sign is fairly obvious. You multiply your own works, you've got to pay those tithes, you've got to knock on doors, you've got to attend all these meetings. What's the real point of most religious meetings? I'm, I'm 61 now. I'm getting on a bit. You know what? It's just to brainwash you. Honestly, most of these religious meetings, you don't learn anything, but you sing those, those clappy songs, you've got the loud praise band, yeah, they control the lighting, they control the atmosphere. It, it's done to brainwash you. It's done to turn you into a submissive, weak woman who is obedient to the pastor, or a submissive, weak beta male who's going to be submissive to the alpha male pastor. It's just, it, the meetings are done to brainwash people in, in many cases, not in every case, but in, in, in many cases. But here's the thing, the multiplication symbol, you've got to multiply your own good works. That's another sign of a cult. So it's a case of not what Christ has done, past tense, it's a case of what you can do in the present tense, you've got to pay those tithes, you've got to attend those meetings so you can be brainwashed, you're going to knock on doors, and you've got all these rules and regulations which just go on and on and on amongst many cults. The multiplication symbol means that because Christ's death and resurrection on the tree is not sufficient to secure your salvation, many cults will say it is, but what they really mean is it, well, it's like a sort of starter, it's like a free offer. Yeah, you get a free offer on the internet sometimes, you know, use this antivirus free for a month, but then you've got to pay after it. And that's how they see Jesus' salvation. The salvation secured by Jesus is kind of partial, not complete. He did this to help you to be saved, but you've got to do lots of works yourself. 
So you have to multiply your own good works, pay those tithes, attend meetings, knock on doors in order to get your salvation according to the cults. And the last one is really sad. It's the divide symbol. In Old Testament Judaism, as you know, once a year, the, the high priest entered the Holy of Holies. There was a thick veil, it's about four to six inches thick, that separated the holy place in the temple, or was it the most holy place, from the Holy of Holies. And oh, once a year, they tie a rope around the high priest's foot in, in case he died in there and they had to pull the body out. And he'd enter the Holy of Holies. And he'd do that by going through, he'd pull the heavy curtain to one side and he'd walk past this heavy veiled curtain into the Holy of Holies. Well, when Jesus resurrected, we read that the, the, this curtain, this curtain ripped from the top to the bottom. Because for Christians, everyone can now approach God. There is no holy of holy that's barred from Christians. You just need to trust in Christ. Uh, trust, uh, place your faith in Christ. And you can go directly to Jesus Christ. Now what happens with the cults is the cults say, no, the veil was never ripped. The veil is still up. You can't go into the holy of holies. You can't approach Jesus because they place themselves as the, as the veil. To the Mormons, that veil is the Mormon church. If you want to approach God, you do it through them because they're the veil. You've got to pay those tithes, get your temple recommend, attend all these meetings, wear suits and ties, knock on, knock on doors, give all this money, give some more money, do all these good works, clean the Mormon church. You've got to do all these good works in order to earn the right for the people who say that they are the veil, they're the way into the Holy of Holies, to say, now you've got that salvation because of all the good works you've done. Same thing with Jehovah's Witnesses. Who are the veil that keep you from the Holy of Holies, that can say yes or no to your salvation? Well, it's the eight-man governing body. And unless you uh, do what they tell you to do, and you agree with their man-made rules, you can't approach God because that veil that kept every, every um, Jewish person, and Hebrew person away from the presence of God in the Holy of Holies, except for the priest once a year and only the high priest once a year. These cults say that they are the veil and they are the thing that's it, to, to get to God, you've got to go through them. So please think about this. Plus, cults add to the Bible. Minus, cults take away from the person or the work of Christ. Multiplication, it's not a case of what, what Christ has done. That's not, they're not interested in that. It's a case of what you can do, usually do for them. You've got to do all these good works for your cult. And only then will they say, after you do all these good works, sometimes they may then say, well, you know, you might have done enough good works or you're close to doing enough good works. Maybe you should do a few more to get God's approval. And the last of all is divide. The cults say that that veil was never ripped. They are that veil. And to enter into the Holy of Holies, you have to go through them, through their leaders and through their rules. Thank you.